Spring. Okay. So telephony today is uh, today's class is going to be or it is telephony USOC parts and 25 pair color code. Okay, so this is the um, uh, this is the communication telecommunication part that we're going to start. Uh, well, we actually basically everything that we do is telecommunications in this class, uh, but it's not the radio antenna telecommunications. It is the data um, wiring or infrastructure wiring telecommunications. This type of telecommunications. Okay, I uh, did you guys see that video that I sent to you last night about the. Um, the big switch in as uh, in 1930s or whatever it was um, about the dial that comes to town that was the big technology yeah old man <laughs> yeah um, so uh, that was uh, that's that was supposed to that none of that is going to be on a test uh, but um, uh, I just thought I would uh, put you in the mood for uh, for today's class okay so anyways um here is our our lesson okay telephony usoc pods 25 pair color code let's start with a little bit of a nostalgia or history he was to, uh he invented the telephone when he was i'm pretty sure most of us know who i'm talking about but hey um let's pay the tribute here uh, his first word spoken on the telephone was Watson, come here. I want to see you. Apparently, he spelled he spilled some acid on his hands or something as he needed some help. Uh, okay, uh, he refused to keep a telephone in his office. He did not. The guy who invented the telephone did not want to have a telephone in his office because he thought it was a distraction. Okay, uh, well. Distraction. Uh, just take a look around when people crossing the street uh, hanging on their cell phones, eh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so what inspired him to invent that? Uh, his mother, Elisa, was hard of hearing, so he was uh, always um, uh, trying to invent things. He had an inventor's mind from the go. Uh, so speech pathology was of his interest since the early years of his life. Now, if you wish, uh, you can click on this YouTube link once you do download this. Plus, there's probably going to be a million other links about that. Of course, we're talking about Mr. Bell, uh, Alexander Graham Bell, Okay, the telephone inventor. First telephones look like this. So here was the mouthpiece, you would be talking to that. This is actually not the very first telephone because uh, this is some kind of like a cradle. You would pick this thing up and you would sp speak to this microphone and uh, actually this not, that would be, you would put that to your ear, this thing here, and you would speak to this microphone and the very first phone uh, that the, the model that, the, but I don't just don't have, I tried to find it, but I, you know, I can't. Maybe in some museums, you'll be able to see it. It, it will actually be like a little bit of a loop here, and this would be in the form of a hook. So that's basically when, uh, when uh, and the terminology stayed, uh, uh, the telephone is off the hook. The telephones are ringing off the hook. So that was because of the first uh, invention that this was not a cradle, it was the hook. Okay, um, so uh, that was microphone mouthpiece and there's an earpiece, all right. Now, um, the Centennial Transmitter, that was a big deal. It was a big invention. Just, just, just think about it uh, um, um, up till then. If you wanted to communicate with somebody, you would just write a letter, throw it in the mailbox, and within a week or two, somebody would get it at the other side. Uh, now, uh, then uh, you would be, oh, you would just send a pigeon, okay? <laughs> uh, so... Um, but then how many pigeons do you have? Okay. Now, uh, from not being able to communicate at all in an instant to actually being able to do that, uh, that was a big deal. Okay. So somebody has invented some, uh, some, some equipment and it was put to use. Of course, not everybody would, uh, um, um, would be able to use that. 
Uh, first, the people who would be uh, you know, in the rich part of the society, they were the first one to use it. Or uh, if you had uh, if you had some important job that you had to do, they would install the phone uh, in your home. Uh, and uh, well, so you would be uh, yeah you, you would be one of the first people to uh, to have a telephone in your at, at your home and then you would find out that well it was more burden than a luxury because uh, none of your friends had telephones so who you, who are you going to call and then in the middle of the night the telephone would ring and it was from your work say so, look you have a trouble online can you come and fix it okay so that was the luxury at that time okay um so now it was such a big deal that they actually made movies uh, about using telephones. So here's an actor portraying, um, um, uh, playing Alexander Graham Bell uh, in 1926. And uh, just take, <laughs> take a look at this thing here. Uh, that was a movie about using a telephone and the movie was silent, okay? <laughs> it was a silent film, all right? So, um, but yeah, those were the days. Okay, um, so it was a big deal. Now, can you can you see that uh, you know in the in the early film days? This is just a side note here. In the early film days, uh, the film was you know they didn't have as much resolution and contrast. So it was the beginning you know, days of the of, of the movie making industry. Notice that uh, his front of the face is, is is more bright than the the back of his neck. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, do you know why that was? How it was it that they uh, they solved the contrast problem? Okay. Well, of course, you had to have some lights. Well, uh, this uh, lighting is uh, was one thing, but look, there's all this. There's also lighting here. His color is uh, bright, and his back of his neck is not. <laughs> The, uh, the early movie sets did not smell that well because uh, in order to, uh, uh, to make his face brighter, they would have to put something on it. So this thing was just basically smothered with lard. Okay, <laughs> so that was, that, was, yeah. um, that was the lard on that thing. You know, can you imagine a kissing scene in uh, <laughs> the movie? Anyways, okay, let's go. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> of course, uh, in March uh, 1876, uh, Bell was success. Uh, Alexander Graham, uh, what, what did I write here? March 10, 1876, Alexander Graham Bell successfully found Thomas Watson for the first time. And look, uh, somebody was going to use a telephone, and uh, people were watching that, and they dressed up. Okay, so, hey. <laughs> uh, all right, early telephone exchange. Now, there was no dial. Uh, if, if you ever watched that movie that I sent, uh, the YouTube link that I sent to you yesterday about the uh, big change that the dial uh, was introduced, uh, there was no dial uh, in the beginning. Uh, the, the telephones, we would just pick up the phone off the hook. And as soon as you took the phone off the hook, there would be a light that would light up on, uh, on, on the switchboard here and the operator would uh, connect to that and in the, there would be the famous number please or in the small towns uh, you would just get people by their last names can i talk to mrs smith or somebody okay so uh, uh, now the telephone exchanges grew bigger and bigger so that was the whole culture of those times okay now uh, from that to this, uh, this uh, central office uh, that what it looks today. So the telephone exchange, uh, it is actually called central office. And then uh, the abbreviation was created, that CO. So when um, uh, sometimes you're going to be asked to identify a CO line, that is basically the POTS telephone line. And we're going to talk about what POTS stands for, okay? It's not what you think. Uh, all right, so now let's get to the tech stuff, how things are, uh, are solved. And, and the concept was kept, uh, the whole basic concept is still uh, kept today. So in the early communications, you would have one wire per circuit and the other part of the circuit completeness would be the ground. It would just go through the earth, okay? And there, was, there would be a battery. All right, so there will be a, a, a DC battery uh, introduced in series with this whole circuit. 
Now, if you uh, talk, if you took the electrical machine scores, uh, you would uh, you would study the electromagnetism or magnetism and electromagnetism. Uh, so you would know that uh, if you have a coil here and you have some sort of a core, uh, you could make things so that uh, if you apply electricity and if you apply AC electricity, then you can make that coil move uh, or the core move. And then if you uh, introduce a voice into one, uh, into the microphone or to one side, or so like, let's say that would be a microphone here. Uh, and then uh, that would move that coil is with certain vibration frequencies and those signal that signal will be transferred onto here and this would be vibrating the same rate so the voice would carry out here now one thing um, uh, well how how does thing, this one so this would be usually wires along along the railroads okay so that's why sometimes if you drive on the countryside, uh, you, see, you will see still some of the old installations just abandoned, uh, and it looks really nostalgic. Okay, so uh, so uh, so there would be one wire per circuit, and the other the other as I said, the other uh, part would be uh, the other uh, the circuit would be closed through earth. Okay, so uh, now. Uh, when you look at this uh, battery here, look at this. If you just look at the battery here, here's the positive terminal and here's a negative terminal. And this positive terminal is connected to ground, okay? So the ground would be hot. You gotta kind of, um, you gotta look at this thing a few times and I'm going to show you uh, other examples of that. So you, you actually uh, know what's going on. There is voltage, there's a DC voltage on the CO line or a central office line, which would be just a regular telephone line. Uh, that is uh, the old fashioned telephone line uh, that is, uh, uh, that is uh, pulled up to your house. And it's called POTS, which stands for Plain Old Telephone Service. That's the most basic telephone line that you can get, okay? Now, if you look at the battery that's there, those lines have their own independent power supply. So if your lights go down in your house, if the electric electricity is cut off, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that the phone lines have lost their power because the phone lines are, are, are powered independently from the central office by the DC power supplies. So look, the positive, plus because you can make the battery float and you can connect the terminals to whatever you want if, uh, if you just free floating device. So notice that the negative side, sorry, the positive side here, this is the positive side, there's a longer prong and a shorter prong here. The positive side is equal with the ground. Uh-oh. Uh I think I did. There we go. I just didn't plug in the adapter. All right. So, um, the line is the positive side of the line is equal with the ground, and the negative sign is more negative than the ground as far as voltage potentials. Okay. So, let's keep that in mind. Now, the reason for that was because originally uh, the lines were installed that the line that was overhead was positive and the ground was considered to be negative with reference to that. But because they were extending copper wires, um, the, the, the wires would oxidize um, more than they want to. So it would cause the oxida oxidation of those lines. Basically, they would rust. So the problem was solved by reversing the polarity. So the earth is more positive than the other terminal of the telephone line. So that was the reason why they did that. Okay. And we will expand on that. Okay. All right. Uh, so that uh, was uh, used for voice. Also this concept, the same concept was used for telegraph. Okay. So most of those lines that you would see along the, the those abandoned tele, uh, telephone lines or telegraph lines. They will be used for telegraphs and there will be telegraph operators. 
And because they would be along the rail stations, um, most of those telegraph stations would be installed uh, around the train stations. Okay, so the, every train station would have a telegraph station so you could communicate and uh, you could send a telegram in the early days to someone and somebody would know something that's called a Morse code. They would receive the telegram and they would basically deliver that as part of their post office service or something like that. Yeah. Uh, now, telegraph lines, they look like this, and usually they would be along the railroads. Okay? And if you want, you can click on that uh, uh, link here. When, later on, when you download this, I just put a YouTube link to Dire Straits Telegraph Road. I just thought I would, it would be a cool thing to do. Okay? Now, let's talk about tip and ring. This jack here, and the guitar players around here, and the musicians. Uh, this would be a famous uh, bass. Okay, we got a friend here. I, my last uh, band that I used to play with was a Rolling Stone tribute band. Uh, and the last time we played was sometime around 2008 or something like that. And I did bass for that band. <laughs> so there you go. High five. All right. Uh, okay, so this would be a very common uh, um, um, guitar plug. Okay, it's called quarter inch. This plug was originally used for telephony. Okay, now this one has tip, ring, and sleeve. Okay, so that's if you're talking about a balanced signal. But usually those phones would be unbalanced. Those tele telegraph lines or telephone lines, which they would be, they would have only tip and the ring this would the sleeve would not this whole thing would be extended so it'd be just tip and ring so it would be unbalanced signal but this uh this jack here is called balanced signal i'm just going to stop here for a sec and i'm going to explain to you the difference between a balanced signal and unbalanced signal um so you just uh, so you Every bit of information that I give you, you're going to use it somewhere, somehow, okay? So here is an unbalanced uh, signal. Uh, let's say here is, uh, here are two wires, okay? Let's say this one is ground and this one is positive. You introduce a signal onto this wire. It comes out on the other end. You can connect anything that utilizes signal. It could be a keyboard, it could be a, um, some output of a, of a preamplifier, whatever it is. And you just basically carry over analog signal to the other side. The problem is that if the signal is really small and the wire runs beside some, in, uh, some device that produces interference, it would create spikes. So the spikes would be carrying on the other side. Um, now, if the signal was strong enough, like let's, for example, one volt peak to peak, so that was called the, the uh, uh, line level signal. So that's what comes out of keyboards, mixing amplifiers, um, and anything that's active pretty much. Okay? Now, so there is no problem with that because the, the, uh, the signal uh, to the noise uh, ratio is sufficient enough so that the noise basically disappears. It's insignificant comparing to the signal levels, right? Now, the problem is when the signal is really small, uh, like this, okay? And then you still get the spike, then you, that spike would be heard. Okay? So that's why uh, balanced um, uh, line was introduced. And the balanced line is you have a ground reference Okay. And then you have a positive side to it, and you have a negative side to it. Okay. Positive and negative terminal. Uh, so the signal is introduced completely out of phase. So let's say here, like that, on that, and this would be just 180 degrees out of phase. Okay. This thing would carry on on the other side and it would be received by something that's called a differential amplifier. And what a differential amplifier would, uh, would do is it would recognize a signal if it comes on both of those lines with reference to ground, if it's, 100, if it's a mirror image, then it considers that signal as a signal. 
So it has to be uh, on two lines. The signal has to be on two lines and it has to be inverted 180 degrees. So now what happens if there is some interference that is introduced, it's going to be in phase, right? Anywhere here. So the spikes would be in phase and they would be ignored. So that's why, that's the difference between balanced and unbalanced signal, okay? So this would be unbalanced. This would be balanced. I think there's a single L in there. If I misspelled it, I apologize. Uh, all right, so um, that would usually be in, uh, um, used with microphones, uh, for example, because microphone would be having like one millivolt peak to peak. Uh, and uh, if those wires run beside some transformer or fluorescent lights so or anything that uh, uh, introduces a signal or if a Volkswagen drives by, uh, then you would hear that uh, uh, you would hear the, now this is uh, old famous joke by Mr. Powell. Okay, if a Volkswagen drives by, I carry that on from years ago when I was his student. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, uh, so that uh, the signal from microphone is uh, much uh, weaker than the signal from the line level uh, source. So that's why you would be able to carry that 100, 200 feet, uh, and the microphone signals, analog microphone signals, would be uh, quite, quite clear. All right. So. <clears throat> Here's the tip and ring, okay? Tip, ring, sleeve. So tip, ring, sleeve would give you a balanced signal. And if you just had the tip and ring, um, uh, you, would, you would only be able to do unbalanced signal, okay? Those jacks, those quarter inch jacks, because there's quarter inch diameter here, those quarter inch jacks come uh, in uh, two basic forms, balanced or unbalanced. All right, so now let's, uh, let's see how this relates to, remember that, uh, that picture that we saw? Where is that? Here. Okay, this thing here. So you see the ground is equal with the positive terminal of the battery that supplies the telephone lines. And the other terminal is more negative. That's where the ring goes. And the tip goes here. So the ring is negative and the tip is positive, but the positive is equal potential with the ground. Again, I'm going to repeat that, okay? The ring is negative and the tip is positive. And the tip, even though it's positive, is with same reference as the ground, okay? Now let's take a look at this uh, here, tip and ring. So, this would be a ring, which would be negative, and the tip would be positive. Okay. So tip is positive here with a reference to ring, but the tip is with the same reference as ground. And the voltage that is on the telephone lines is uh, 48 volts DC. <coughs> So the, 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 the CO lines or the central office lines or the POTS lines, uh, they said they idle at, and here's the train, they idle at um, um, 48 volts DC. And that is connected to a phone. So the phone is basically connected to 48 volts DC, regular telephone. If you want to make the phone ring, all you have to do is raise the voltage to a 90 volts minimum DC. And if you raise the voltage to 90 volts for about two seconds, you're going to hear a ring on the phone for two seconds. And then you just disconnect that, or you just get it back to the 48 volts and then the phone is going to be silent. And then again, if you raise it for another two seconds, then the phone is going to ring. So that's how you make the phone ring by, up, by increasing this voltage here from 48 volts to uh, 90 volts. At 90 volts minimum, uh, there's a standard that it has to be 90 volts minimum. Why does it have to be 90 volts minimum? Because there are all kinds of other equipment devices uh, that are connected instead of a phone and uh, things have to be standardized. So 
um, you need to have some sort of a common um, uh, common concept uh, so everybody makes things the same way and, uh, and and we'll expand on that as we go along okay so let's just uh, talk about the USOC right now okay USOC stands for universal service ordering code uh, it is a standard for wiring the telephone lines and it has to do with a pinout okay there's an rj11 telephone jack um, rj stands for registered jack basically okay so it's things have to be standardized because in the old days uh, there would be um, uh, different companies using their own different connections their own different standards nothing was uh, nothing was the same so uh, it was very difficult as far as compatibility between one equipment and the other. Now there would be only one company, AT and T, that was that would be using it, and they would say they would set their own standards as they please. But um, uh, but then later on, when different companies came on the market, uh, everybody was setting their own standards. So somebody just put their foot down and they said, you know what? Let's standardize those things to make life easier for everybody. All right. So uh, registered jack stands for RJ. Okay, RJ11 looks like this. RJ12 basically looks the same way, but it has more prongs. You see, RJ11, if you oh, <laughs> all right, okay, here now we got it. USOC stands for Universal Service Ordering Code. Okay, so here's RJ11 telephone jack, and you can tell that uh, RJ11 has one, two, three, four prongs, so it's capable of supplying two telephone lines because every telephone line a co line um, um, use, uh, uses one pair so this is capable of two pairs now rg12 is the same thing and the out there outer prongs are filled with outer slots are filled with prongs so rg12 is uh, is capable of supplying uh, three lines and i'll tell you how in a different way, we uh, we count the pairs. Now there's um, uh, um, oh you know talk to me, uh, Quentin. Talk to me if you want. I'll uh, I'll tell you what I did with my base. All right. uh, now what happens? Uh, I see a question from Kate. Uh, is that how you would get noise counseling? Um, counseling um uh so you uh, i assume you're talking about the balance and uh unbalanced uh yeah that's uh that's basically how you cancel the noise in a balanced line right very very efficient way uh the key thing that you want to review if you want uh, is uh, called a differential amplifier okay Maybe someday, uh, if you want, uh, next lab, uh, maybe I can bring a microphone into the into the classroom, and we can connect uh, the mic because the microphones have uh, XLR uh, balanced uh, input or output from the microphone. We can just connect those wires onto the oscilloscope that we have, and uh, we can actually see how uh, how those. Uh, how that uh, it's not equal the, uh, the, the the positive side is basically having a stronger signal and the negative side is just uh, a little bit smaller just to provide a reference um, it's, it's pretty nifty trick i mean nifty uh, solution here okay so back to this uh, <clears throat> so rj40 so use use SOC stands for universal service ordering code now remember when we talked about the uh, when we did the uh, um, rj40 RJ45, it's a designation, number, type of, a, as a name, R45, RJ45 jack or T568 standard, we would count the pairs. Remember the dance that we did? Pair one, pair two, pair three, and pair four. Right. Now with the USOC, the pairs are counted differently. The pins are still from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but the pairs in the USOC they go just this is they just keep going outwards so here's pair one here's pair two three and four i don't know if you would have a jack that uh, would uh, that would supply more than four pairs it would have a you would have a thick jack but uh, rg45 actually is is capable of uh, of supplying four pairs if you wire that in the use of configuration okay? so 
Remember, T56CA standard, we would count the pairs one, two, three, and four. And when the USOG, we count the pairs like this, one, two, three, and four. Right? So that's the main difference here. Right? So let's just keep going with this. USOG RG wiring configuration. So here is a picture of how we wire the jack as far as the pair counting. So you're gonna see these pins, one, two, three, four, five, six, for RJ, um, RG12. Uh, and here's how we count the pairs. Here's pair one. Remember we did the pairs, blue, orange, green, brown. They would be the first four pairs of the 25 pair color code, which we cover in just a few minutes and the group is white okay so this is the modern color uh color code oh, i just made one word of two words colored <laughs> color code uh so um uh, uh unshielded twisted pair this is the cable that we're using and we also cover the cables in further lectures but it's unshielded twisted pair we have twisted, we have pairs going through this wire, CAT5E, and those pairs are twisted, and the whole thing is not shielded. So UTP, unshielded twisted pair. So this is how we count the pairs for the USOC configuration. Okay. Pair one, pair two, and pair three. Pair one is here blue, pair two is orange, pair three is green. And if there would be pair four, it would be brown. Okay. Now, the older color code, you will still see some wiring that employs the older color code. And um, it would, you would have the red and green, black and yellow and uh, white and blue, okay? Now, remember the T1 and R1, that stands for tip and ring. See, we're not using those quarter inch jacks anymore but the terminology has stayed. Okay, so when we, come, when we talk about uh, telephony or telecommunications as such, we are not talking wires or conductors, we are talking about pairs. It's just easier to, uh, to have a conversation and quicker without having, okay, here is the two wires and one goes there, one, here's a pair. How many pairs do you need to order? How many lines, okay? so talk about pairs when we talk about uh, this type of telecommunications. So if you look at this thing here, uh, red wire is a ring and green wire is tip. Remember the tip is always more positive than ring. Right? So you would, if the line would idle, it would idle at 48 volts DC between tip and ring with the tip would be more positive than uh, then ring. If you connect your voltmeter, your uh, red leads to tip and the black lead to ring, you would have, your voltmeter would show plus 48 volts. Okay? If you connect, of course, your black lead to tip and red lead to the ring, your voltmeter would show negative 48 volts or somewhere about that. Okay, and just remember that the ground reference is not with the negative side the ground reference is with the positive side so basically the ring is more negative than ground so here is tip and ring for the red uh, for the green and red and this is how those colors translate onto the new modern color code the 25 pair uh, uh, color code Okay, and um, now uh, you can just see how it relates to the other pairs. You will still see some of the old wiring in some old installations. And this is how we uh, translate those colors into the new wiring code. And here's the pin configuration. So just, just look at it, uh, uh, you will, um, um, you'll be able to, uh, to make sense of that. And we will look at this thing during the labs, okay? 
All right, so here's our J14 telephone jack. Uh, it's a surface mount uh, telephone jack. Uh, you will still see that. So if there is only one telephone line that is uh, provided to the house, uh, you will see uh, you will see something like that. And most of the time, you're going to have to only connect uh, red and green okay. with the correct polarity, preferably. Uh, the telephones, uh, today's telephones and telephone equipment has uh, on its input, it would have something that's called a bridge rectifier. Uh, so no matter which way you connect the, if you, even if you reverse the polarity by mistake in that jack, that bridge rectifier would take care of it and it would supply the correct polarity to the, um, uh, to the rest of the equipment. However, we should, uh, we should connect those things as tip and ring. So keep looking at those, uh, uh, at those diagrams here. Like for example, here, uh, tip would be green and red would be ring. Okay. And of course, tip uh, would be more positive than the ring. But as again, I'm going to say the tip, even if it's more positive than the other one, uh, it is at the equal potential or voltage potential with the ground. This is something that uh, some, some people get confused about a little bit. So that's why I keep saying that so many times. Uh, all right, where are we here? Uh, so most of the times you're going to only have to connect uh, red and green. And how you connect those, because those jacks, you're going to still see the red and green. How are we going to connect uh, that? Well, where there is a red, you would go with the blue, solid blue. And where there's a green, you would go uh, stripe green, uh, sorry, blue, solid blue, and the white blue. Right. Solid blue goes to red, uh, stripe goes to uh, green. If by mistake you reverse the polarity and the only thing that is being connected to your house is the telephone, it will still work because as I said, uh, pretty much all the telephones, they do have a bridge rectifier uh, built into that. So it's uh, no matter how you plug it in, uh, you're going to still have uh, the correct voltage. Uh, uh, should we know that the chart for the test or quiz or something, should we know that chart? Um, well, you know what? I am going to say this to you. Uh, our tests right now, they are open book tests. So even though, uh, you know the answers, you still have to look for the answers. So that's why I'm going to ask you questions that involve more details on the test than if um, um, if it was in person, uh, in class. I would ask you less details because of course, I'm not going to expect you to remember all the fine details about the color code, uh, uh, which terminal it's supposed to go to or, or, or not. Uh, but at least you should know where to find that information. Okay, so uh, on the online test that we have, I'm going to ask you more details. So if you don't know, you should be able to look for it, but you can. Uh, I'm not going to stop you. I actually encourage you and I design my tests in a way that you look for the information. So you still are learning while you're being tested. Uh, okay, uh, so here is the color code. Let's keep going. Uh, so yeah. So most of the time you're going to see that, and now you know how to connect the telephone line. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have here? Keep going. Here is another visual representation of, uh, of what we have here. So you can look at that diagram, you can look at this diagram, uh, whichever speaks to you more and it's, uh, which is more easier for you to remember. Now, if you're going to do the telephone installations and if you do this this uh, day in and day out, eight hours per day, you're going to have this thing burned into your brain that you you will know that you know in your sleep. But uh, if you're not doing this thing all the time, uh, at least you know where to find the information when you need to. Yeah. All right, so... Um, real life equipment. And we have that in our lab. You can, uh, it's, it's right by the cage, uh, by the cage, 
Um, it's uh, right by the cage where the uh, there's some equipment stored and there's a plywood. And on that plywood, there is this demarcation point, uh, also known as the demark. Demarcation point means a point of entry, okay? So here is uh, real life equipment that is capable of supplying two lines to the house. What do we have here? We have two terminals, screw terminals, yeah, compression terminals, that uh, you would bring the line through this outlet right here. That's the line going from the central office from the city, okay? And it is connected right into here. So you can choose which one you want to be the line one, which one's gonna be the line two. Usually the top one is gonna be line one. So that's, you can see here, there's the green wire and the red wire, okay? Tip and ring. So the tip and ring are connected to here from the city to the screw terminals and to the very same screw terminals, uh, those wires are going into this RJ12 or RJ11 jack. Okay. And the other side of this wire of this cable is connected to these terminals. So from here, you take the line, telephone line, red and green, and you come out the other opening and that goes to the house. What does that do here? Well, um, you can very easily disconnect the line if you want and connect that if you want. And then also this little block here, it's, it's the lightning protection. Okay, so uh, any type, if you, even if two inches of wire uh, uh, poke outside the house, you need to have a lightning protection. Okay, so if lightning strikes, this thing is going to act and it's going to bring that right to this ground because this is a ground wire here. Okay. So here's line one connected to this block. Here's line two connected to this block. A very easy concept. Not a big philosophy. Now, I, now you know how this works. All right, demarcation point continuing, right? Because uh, those the telephone lines have to be brought into the buildings somehow. This is a picture of uh, some buildings demarcation point that is inside a building. So the telephone lines are brought into this uh, disconnect box, and inside you just have push buttons with the numbers of the 25 pair or 100 pair color code, okay? So now this, uh, this thick wire right here is connected to a hundred pairs in here. And if you want to activate one of those pairs, you just push the button in. <coughs> Excuse me. Now out of here, there are hundred pairs coming out and they are terminated at something that's called a Bix block. Bix is, um, it's a termination platform and they look like this. Uh, the lab after this one, we're going to terminate a 25 pair color code, uh, a 25 pair cable onto the Bix according to the color code. But this thick cable has four 25 pair cables in it, right? And each Bix block is capable of accommodating 25 pairs. So you have one, two, three, four frames terminated according to the 25 pair color code. So you have 25 pairs, 25 pairs, 25 pairs, and 25 pairs. Altogether gives you 100 pairs. Right? So that's uh, that's the DMARC point that's coming into the into the building here. And over here, you have also cables or wires terminated onto a big frame. And those wires go to the field. These are the field wires. And remember when we talk about field wiring, that's the wires that go to the rest of the building, wherever they go. They could go directly to a wall jack. They could go to the desktop. Um, they can... Um, um, they can just be extended to another field like this frame. Right? So that's the field wiring. Right? 
And over here between these two frames, you can see the there's some wires. So basically how you terminate that, you terminate that 25 pairs, first 25 pairs on the frame and you flip it. So the front goes to the back and from the front, you can just grab those pairs from the front with the insulation displacement connection with the Bix punch down. This particular one is Bix. Uh, there are other uh, platforms for telephony that are called 66 blocks, mostly used in the States. Uh, and they are bigger, bigger <laughs> and bulkier. Um, and uh, they're older, okay? Now, uh, Canadian uh, side of the border has implemented Bix blocks. And I remember that ever since I was in the industry, which is, uh, early 90s, what's like 91, 92, something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so the BICs are more compact and I think they're more reliable and easier to terminate. So between that front here, so of course the field wiring is terminated at the back side of every frame. So you can grab the front, uh, the pairs from the front. And these wires that go across from here to there, this is how you connect that pair from this phrase frame that let's say pair number three from this frame has to go to whatever pair number 22 from that frame and you cross connect from here you just punch it here you run the wire this could be done a little bit better uh, it's not as uh, as neat as it should be and it goes and it's being punched here. So that's why this wire here is called cross connect wire because you cross connect from here to there. And if you if somebody moves out from that unit and they uh, release the phone line, they don't need it anymore. Somebody just comes and just removes that cross connect wire from there and that's it. And uh, and you just go and unpush the button. Uh, but that would be the like here in Ontario would be the bell technicians that would do that. Over here, if you would be a third party technician, you would just you would just uh, have something to do with this part only, okay? So that's how the cross connect wires and the VIX uh, demarcation point. Demarcation is a point of entry, okay? Uh, <clears throat> all right. Um, let's see here. We got uh, 12, uh, that's what, what does my, uh, what does my, it says 12.54. Let's say it's 12.55. Uh, let's give ourselves uh, about uh, 10 minutes or 10 minutes is too much. Or would you like five minutes break so we can continue? How about we give ourselves a seven minutes? Okay, so uh, 12.54, 12.55. One, let's meet. Two minutes after, two minutes after one. Here is the uh, on everybody's phone because we are we are synchronized. We don't need to synchronize our watches. Uh, and let's meet. And we'll con we're going to continue. So go grab yourself a fresh coffee. Go to the bathroom, and I'll see you two minutes after one. Okay.
Okay, so we're now on vision. Welcome back. All right. <laughs> cool. All right, so I just have a uh, one telephone jack here. So sometimes you're going to see things like that. This uh, is pretty much almost, well, it's the same size of uh, physical size of the inlet for uh, as just like uh, the RG45 jack, okay? But this is not a data jack. When you see something like this, I just, uh, it was uh, full of silicon. It's from some old installations when, the, when we were uh, ripping things out of the walls. Uh, the pairs you're counting here uh, are like this here is your pair one, okay, here's pair two, pair three and pair four. So if you just had one telephone line, uh, you would just get your big punch down tool and uh, you will know what that is after the lab that we conduct. Uh, you just uh, run, you just bring your line in here and punch the blue pair right in here. And that would give you the telephone uh, outlet, all right? So, do not use that for data. It's not going to work. It's not wired in such way for uh, uh, to, to, to service as data. And it's not specified for the, uh, uh, it's not going to fill, fulfill, fulfill the specifications for data uh, signal, okay? All right, <clears throat> let's keep going with this. Uh, here, fresh coffee reloaded. My phone here, all right. Now, POTS filtering, here's another uh, concept when it comes to telephone line. Related terminology is DSL, dry loop, and a voice, okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, the telephone lines at first, before the internet came, uh, came to, uh, to, to, to uh, be available for commercial use, uh, the telephone lines were designed to carry out uh, um, carry out the voice uh, circuitry only and the bandwidth was quite narrow all right so in the older days uh, older days you're talking uh, towards the uh, <coughs> excuse me towards the mid 90s uh, the telephone uh, the voice on telephone would sound uh, it would sound like this okay because the uh, the telephone uh, uh, voice circuitry was designed just to carry enough bandwidth to carry the human voice so you can understand uh, and talk to each other. Then later on, the modems were introduced and the modems bandwidth were slow, uh, slow enough. So that bandwidth, the voice bandwidth could carry that signal. So the, uh, the, 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 um, the modems were not as fast, the, the earlier ones, okay? Later on, when the, when the internet speed came faster and faster, those telephone lines had to be upgraded to carry more bandwidth, all right? Because right now on the telephone line, uh, not only you carry voice, but uh, the DSL signal is also imposed onto the uh, onto the telephone line. The problem with that is that on the voice line, the DSL signal would be uh, superimposed onto that, and you would hear a buzz uh, that uh, is associated with the DSL signal. So that thing had to be filtered somehow. So, the, uh, so you're not going to, uh, uh, it's not going to be annoying uh, because uh, uh, you would just talk to someone on the phone and in the background you would hear that zzz, you know all the time so that's not good so that's why um, um, the dsl and voice has to be separated somehow there are two ways of separating that and we'll talk about the dry loop uh, uh, actually i can i can mention that now because uh, right now a lot of people have, well, pretty much everybody has a cell phone. So people are kind of getting rid of the land lines or the pots lines as their main telephone communication, all right? But sometimes the uh, internet is still carried through the phone lines. So if you disconnect the voice circuitry from the telephone lines and you only, which means that you have no dial tone, on that line. You still have the telephone line connected, but there's no dial tone. You cannot plug in just a regular POTS or single line telephone 
single line telephone also stands for the parts line because it just employs one line so it is a single line and sometimes people refer it to as sl phone okay single line <clears throat> excuse me so um now um because some people just don't want to have the telephone service but they still want to have the dsl which stands for digital subscribers line or digital subscriber line which is the internet signal on it so that line is still connected but only with dsl okay. so that is called a dry loop there's no voice but they're only internet so this is uh this is referred to as a dry loop the telephone line carries only DSL, but no voice. Uh, I can see a chat. My father refuses to get rid of our home line, despite of the fact that we all have good cell plans. Well, you know what? Uh, uh, some people get used to it, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's the way it goes. My mom still has the, uh, uh, well, the, the POTS line. However, uh, we switched that to the DSL, uh, the... Uh, um, dry loop only and then the uh, phone signal is carried through the in so we could call the internet phone right uh, so that's also a popular way of doing it but let's say it's a regular pulse line so at the d mark you're going to have a telephone line that carries voice and dsl which means it's going to have that dsl signal superimposed to that and you're going to hear that buzz every time you talk on the phone so you have to filter things out uh, one way of doing that, uh, sometimes you would get those filters, and this this uh, this would be plugged in to the telephone jack uh, in your kitchen or in your living room somewhere. Um, and over here, you would plug in your telephone. So that little device would filter out that digital subscriber the dsl and you would only be able to communicate with the voice on that particular phone which means that if you have two or three phones you would have to have two or three of these filters plugged in everywhere there is a phone okay uh let's say here okay uh, there's a chat line here okay so when the home phone rings here and when it's picked up it disconnects the internet for about 10 seconds um, it has probably something to do with the, uh, with the telephone, um, circuitry or the telephone equipment circuitry. It should not be happening, but, uh, it depends what telephone you have. Okay. It is, uh, it is happening at, uh, uh, by the phone, the phone is doing that. Okay, so sometimes maybe there's, in, it introduces maybe a large spike or something that onto the line, and then the data uh, data signal gets uh, um, gets interrupted by that spike. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> now another way of doing that is uh, having there's one of those here. Uh, then uh, it, they come in different forms, but this is one of the more common forms. Uh, you put this one here right at the D mark point. So over here, and this one comes in, uh, it's a nice design because you can either use the uh, RJ jacks or you can use the screw terminals, your choice. It doesn't matter which one you use. They are all interconnected. So you can either use the bare wires and connect it to the screw terminals, or you can plug in the telephone cords here. So the first one would have a line coming in, okay? So uh, from the city, for the CO line will become will be plugged in right in here or with the screw terminals connected to this one doesn't matter it's the same it, they're, they're the same okay you just you just choose which one you want to use <coughs> excuse me uh, so over here inside there's an internal circuitry that separates those signals so from here you would um, you would connect the wires that go onto your modem into your modem and you would carry just the modem signal just the internet signal just the dsl signal and that would be connected to only the modem and of course later on it would be uh, you would use the lan uh, wiring to uh, connect the uh, internet or um, 
digital signal into whatever equipment you have. And over here, you have just a voice line without that DSL. And this part would go to the rest of your phones. So you can either connect per phone with every phone. By the way, uh, if you have that, maybe you, if you get one of those filters, uh, that might solve your problem okay? well, of, uh, of disconnecting the uh, DSL. Uh, you can either have that at the end uh, at the end of the line for every phone, or you can have one centrally installed filter, then you don't have to use these for every phone. Okay? So that's a filtering. Right? So again, DSL is called digital subscriber line. It's the internet signal on that telephone. Voice is the good old fashioned voice telephone signal. And if you just want to get rid of the voice, if you don't want to pay for the phone service, you just want to pay for the DSL service, that telephone line would carry only DSL and that type of line is called a dry loop. Now dry loop is not to be confused with a hard loop because uh, sometimes you're going to get, uh, uh, someone is going to ask you for a hard loop. Right? Now there are both associated with the communications uh, that we talk about. And they're both end with the word loop. One is called a dry loop, which is this. And the other one is called a hard loop. So I'm going to show you what the difference is between a dry loop and a hard loop, okay? So a dry loop is a POTS line, plain old telephone service, like just a telephone line with only DSL signal, a telephone line with no voice or no dial tone used when subscriber wishes to purchase internet only but no telephone service over a regular telephone line and that's where it comes in here then you might actually skip that pots filter and go straight into the modem right? and then from here from your modem the rest of your network is being hooked up so that's a dry loop now hard loop has to do with the ethernet okay um, <clears throat> Here's the Ethernet jack, okay? Now, up to Cat 5E, only two pairs are being used, the orange pair and the green pair. The blue and the brown are pretty much abandoned unless you want to use something that's called PoE, which is power over Ethernet, uh, then uh, there could be some uh, power signal or the DC, not signal, DC uh, present on one of those lines, uh, on one of those uh, uh, pairs, okay? But let's say just uh, forget the blue and the brown. We're going to concentrate on the orange and green. Now, orange and green are the only pairs that are being used up till CAT 5E. CAT 6 utilizes all four pairs, so the blues and the browns come into play. But this is CAT 5E hard loop. Now, orange and green pair, one of them is transmit and one of them is receive. Which one is transmit and which one is receive? It depends on which end of the cable you're looking at it, okay? But if you connect, if you loop it out, you connect the orange straight to the green and you, uh, so the whites go to whites and the solids go to solids, you're basically looping it up. You're connecting receive or transmit straight into the receive and the receive straight into the transmit. You're looping it out, loop, just looping it. Right? Uh, so it's just like a pass through jack. This thing is being used as a diagnostic tool. So sometimes you're going to have to uh, uh, plug that in um, into one of the ports that was supplied by uh, whatever the provider is. And uh, the, your service call would be just that. You would have to get your hard loop, plug it into that port, and be on the phone with whatever the technician is on the other side. And they're going to do their magic on their keyboard and do the all kinds of tests just to make sure that the line that is going to that building or to that DMARC point uh, is up to the specifications. And that usually takes about a minute or so. And they're going to say, okay, unplug it. Now you can plug in the rest of the equipment. So that's a hard loop. So here's the difference between dry loop and a hard loop. 
this is going to be on a test. All right, wiring configuration. Um, okay, in the old original, oh, I keep referring this thing as the old days, okay? There would be a telephone line coming from the utility pole going into the DMARC point, and from the DMARC point, it would be distributed to the rest of the house in a way that is called will be called a daisy chaining. Okay, so the line would go to the first jack, and from there, in the parallel connection, it will be carried on to the next jack, and then in parallel connection to the next jack, and whatever the number of phones you would have. Uh, basically, the whole thing is configured as a you know, in a bus topology, uh, parallel connections. Each phone taps into that one line that carries on. Um, well, that means that if somebody is talking on this phone and somebody in the other room picks up that phone, they would be part of the conversation. They would hear them talking and they would actually be able to talk. So you would just tap into the conversation. Uh, now. Um, it is not wise to do that because um, for the configuration logistics reasons, um, because sometimes you want to uh, carry out a computer line or a DSL, not DSL, uh, Ethernet line. So most of the telephone now is being wired with minimum Cat5e, okay? So the jack, the telephone jack that, or the jack that's in the wall can be used um, either to, for the phone purposes or it could be used for to connect your computer. Okay? Now, if you're doing the daisy chaining thing, you won't be able to use that because the, the ethernet signal would be interrupted by the phone. So that's, that's, that's not a good thing to do right now. So right now, what people do, or which, which should be done, is that all the jacks that are in the house or in the facility should home run to the central location. Okay, and from here, if you want to configure that in the bus, you can you can configure that internally here by plugging in in a specific way or connecting it. So no problem. Or if you want to disconnect, for example, just this jack from the rest of the system because you want to plug in a Ethernet connection, then you can use that one only for the Ethernet. So this way that will give you the freedom of, for example, having two jacks in one faceplate. This one could be telephone signal and this would be computer signal. So uh, the wiring that should be done right now, this daisy chaining, that's the old ways, it should be abandoned. Uh, don't do that. Unfortunately, uh, I can see some of the, and I'm going to use the word cheap companies that would build the houses, they would install the, uh, uh, the telephone line in the daisy chain configuration. It's less and less happening right now. Uh, but you just got to make sure because later on, everything is in the drywall, everything is in the walls. Uh, it's hard to rewire that. So everything should be using, a, well, it looks like a star topology. Remember from last lecture? Everything home run, star home run configuration. So everything home runs to the central location. Okay, so that's the wiring thing. Okay. Second part of this class here, this lecture is 25 pair color code. Okay. That's what a 25 pair cable looks like. And we will connect that. Uh, we will connect this uh, 25 pair cable onto a big frame uh, during the lab that comes after the next one. So the next one is going to be uh, something else, uh, which is I think uh, we're going to make a RG45 uh, Ethernet uh, uh, cable. And then lab after that, we are going to take the 25 pair cable and we're going to connect that or punch that in to the frame, Bix frame that is involved, that involves uh, 25 pair color code. And we have to connect that according to the 25 pair color code. So let's take a look at this. All right, so the 25 pair color, 25 pair cables uh, look like this, all right? Um, here is the jacket thing, and this is how it fans out, all right? Now, uh, there come different, uh, 
configurations. Most of that is, um, most of the still 25 pair cables are in the CAT3 configuration. CAT3 is obsolete as far as data. It has the little twist and the twist is not as controlled as the CAT5E or CAT5. Uh, CAT5 is also not used. Uh, so this should be CAT5E. Uh, so, but still this wire is being used for control wires or just for telephone service. So this is still widely used. You can still see that, okay? Now the 25 pair CAT5 or CAT5E cable, you can notice that it has more tight twist and twist is more consistent. Um, and it has a strength member here inside. Uh, some of them uh, do that. Uh, so, so 25 pair cables in CAT5 E configurations. Um, you will see some of that, but from my experience, it's, it is not uh, as widely implemented. Uh, there's a different type of uh, uh, LAN kind of a configuration that's being used when it comes to uh, when it comes to that. If you want to have those that many signals, uh, Ethernet signals on one wire. Uh, most of the time, these days, you would use a fiber optic line, okay? But uh, I just want you to know that these things exist and it's still being sold and you're going to still see those uh, on, during your service call, uh, service calls. <clears throat> All right, 25 pair color code. It has 25 pairs, which means it has 50 single conductors. The 25 pair color code, those wires are grouped. There is a group of white, red, black, yellow, and violet. So these are the groups. Each group consists of blue, orange, green, brown, slate. Slate stands for gray. This is the designation here. Now, here's the easy way to remember. Remember when we have, uh, uh, we really suck to be the colorblind. Uh, well, you know, um, um, Yes, uh, uh, you know, there are more colorblind uh, people around us here that we might realize, okay? And uh, um, uh, so sometimes not, if, you're colorblind, if you're colorblind, then uh, this might not be your job to do when it comes to connecting that, all right? <laughs> Anyways, there's uh, <laughs> the, the, the duties and the, the, the jobs around the telecommunications. Uh, there's so many that sometimes you don't need to use the color uh, color codes but anyways so each group has five designation colors so here's a group color and here are designation colors and those repeat blue orange green brown slate five of them okay and then again blue orange green brown slate every group has blue orange green brown slate and these are pair one two, three, four, five. Again, one, two, three, four, five, and so on until you reach the 25th pair. The group colors are easy to remember because now we have worked uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, we were, remember we punched the uh, RG45 jack, the, uh, the ethernet jack with the 110 punch down tool. Remember we were using the white, blue and blue white, orange, and orange. So that would be the first four pairs of the whole big 25 pair car. And we had the white group. So we remember that already, right? Now, easy way to remember. There are some acronyms that people use, whatever, okay? You can, if there are some, you know, some acronyms I can repeat and some acronyms I cannot repeat, okay? Here on the public forum. Now, <clears throat> But here's, a, here's the way I remember this, okay? So white, we, also, we already know. Then, well, it helps if you're in Canada because the Canadian, think of Canadian colors, okay? So the next one is red, okay? So white, the next group is red. And here's the thing, easy to remember. Well, I guess it is easy to remember. In Texas, here's Texas. I've got from Ontario to Texas right now, all right? There is a, there is a certain type of snake and I don't remember the name of that snake, 
Okay. The snake has uh, rings. So it has uh, yellow, black, uh, red, yellow, black, red, you know, uh, uh, those rings. Okay. And it's an extremely poisonous snake. So people should be aware of that in Texas or southern states there. Now, there is another one snake that looks just like that, but it has the rings arranged in a different way, and it's an imposter. This one is not poisonous. He still wants you to be afraid of him, but uh, if he bites you, you're not going to die. The other one, uh, you might be in some kind of trouble if you get bitten by the, the, the poisonous one. And this is the little rhyme thing that they, uh, they teach the kids in school so they can avoid those type of snakes because you don't want the kids to be bitten by that. So they have to come up with some sort of way to teach those children not to come close to those snakes. And the rhyme thing is, is black and yellow kill a fellow. All right? That means when, the, when you see a snake and it has those two rings and it's black touches yellow, that means that's the poisonous snake. So there's a black and yellow killer fellow. So kids, easy to remember for the kids, so they can avoid those snakes. All right, so here it is, uh, white. And there's that Canadian colors, right? The black and yellow killer fellow. That's very violent because violence is the, only, is the last thing that we need, the last thing that we want. And violent is almost sounds like violet. So violence is the last thing we need, violet is last. Okay, so here's white, red, black and yellow killer fellow, violence is last thing we need, it goes at the last. So here are the, the uh, is that called coral snake? Maybe, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, maybe I can find out later on. Uh, but if you Google black and yellow killer fellow, you're gonna probably get the explanation behind that. All right, so here is the five groups, and here is the does here are the designation colors that uh, you can always learn that by heart: blue, orange, green, brown, slate. Blue, orange, green, brown, slate. Blue, orange, green, brown, slate. Paycheck is on Thursday. Blue, orange, green, brown, slate. All right, so uh, um, that's the easiest way to remember and if you have to punch one of those in that you haven't done for a long time then you just google the color code for 25 pairs and all this stuff that i said <laughs> you won't need because you, you know uh, you can google that all right all right so 25 pair color uh 25 pair cable that's one 25 pair uh cable but sometimes you it's, it's what's in one bundle when you strip the jacket thing, you're going to see some of the you see a ribbon, or sometimes you just see a string, just like the pull string that we used, and they have different colors. If this is just one, you're going to see um, if it's just one 25 pair cable, then you're going to see three strings. One string is going to be spirally uh, wrapped around that just to designate that, uh, just to keep it in place. And there's going to be a separate string that you can use as a rip cord. And that is not spirally wrapped around those bundle, it's just inserted straight. So you can just pull that and score the insulation with it, okay? So here is, uh, here's the first one. Here's the, uh, but, okay, so here's the bundle of 25 pair cable. Now, Remember when I showed you the big termination that uh, there was one jacketed 100 pair cable? 100 pair cable is four 25 pair cables together. Now, this one here shows that a little bit of a sheathing here that, uh, that bundles all of them. Sometimes you'll see it, some, yeah, the sheath always, most of them. But Look at this, there are 25 pair cable, 25 pair cable, 25 pair cable, and 25 pair cable all in one, and all of them use this color scheme, all right? So whenever you are going to install the 100 pair cable, it is really important that you keep those bundles intact. And those bundles, you see there are those spiral wrapped around this one has like a little plastic but 
uh, some manufacturers they just do a they just wrap it around with string that looks like a pull cord um, and they're in different colors and one the first one was going to be wrapped around spirally wrapped with the blue string the second one is going to be wrapped around with the orange string and the third one is going to be wrapped around with the green string and you guessed it the last one is going to be with the brown so when you strip the jacket thing you should quickly find those spiral wrapped strings and just when you when you get it to the point that you strip the that much that you want the, the, the designated distance you take that spiral wrap and you tie a knot around that pair that uh, bundle so you know that this bundle here belongs to the brown bundle and the other one belongs to orange bundle because if you don't do that and you just cut all the strings off and you just let that go those are going to be they're just going to mix within each other and you will not know if that blue pair white blue pair is from the first bundle or the third bundle so that's how the hundred pair color code is uh, is um, is solved okay so <clears throat> Applications, multi-pair links, telecommunications used in telephony. This is what we're going to do in our lab after that. So that's the lab six, I think it's going to be. Uh, so here's the Bix termination strip. Here's Bix termination field. And here are 25 pair cables. So sometimes you're going to have intermediate frames here that you're going to have a bunch of 25 pair ca uh, cables coming into one field and there's going to they're going to continue somewhere else to different destinations like for example all the telephone lines come to here and from here there would be 125 pair cable going to let's say it's a big mall so 125 pair cable would be going to somewhere to walmart or maybe two of those and then maybe another 25 pair cable is going to some other department store. So from here, they will be branching out and here's your cross connect cable. So you terminate those wires on the front, then you flip the frame. So it's basically front to back and those cables are terminated at the back and you can grab those pairs from the front. It's a pretty good idea here. And of course, as we talked about a few minutes ago, this is a cross connect wire. Okay. So that's one of the applications for that. Another application for this, uh, for example, this is a uh, telephone system, KSU, key service unit. Okay. Now, this particular one is a small one, it goes three by eight. So you can see that uh, there's the phone. So you can see that there are three telephone lines coming in here and this is capable of uh, eight extension telephones coming out. So here's an Amphenol connector, RJ21 uh, connector that also has that 25 pair cable terminated in a certain way according to the color code. That is terminated onto the Bix frame that big, uh, that big termination strip is going to um, uh, be inserted in one of those and the field wiring could be cross-connected into it. Okay, so, uh, so that's another application. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the beautiful music here that we have to hear. Uh, yeah, okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, so that's another uh, application. Can you name other uses for the multi-pair cable? Well, just think about that. And next time we see each other during the lab, we can just, uh, we can do that. So here's the references. And that's the end of this. Um, that's the end of this uh, longer lecture uh, bundled into one. It is going to be available very soon uh, in, uh, on, your, on our class portal, so you can download this. And this video is going to be uploaded onto YouTube. All right, uh, so any questions uh, about this class? Anything that can, you can think of now, and if you can think of something later, send me an email if you want, or you can just ask me during the lab. All right. If not, uh, that is going to be the end of this class. And... Um,
I will see you when I see you. I'm just gonna wait a couple seconds. Yeah, thank you. You have a good weekend, guys. And uh, thank you for the great feedback. You know who you are. I really appreciate that. Okay, that's it. Have a great weekend.